have ever gone camping before, just drop it in and, and tell me your thoughts. Or if you haven't gone camping, just tell me your thoughts about camping all together. Hey, on YouTube. Um, for those of you who don't know, we go live on YouTube and on um, Instagram. Today is Tuesday. It's usually on Monday nights. But we're talking about nature tonight. And I realized that the answers to the majority of our questions have always been right here in front of us. The answer to the majority of life's questions literally surround us all the time. And so often we don't stop to notice and to witness and to take heed. Okay, bugs. Yes, there were some of those. We have wonderful bug spray. Um, Nefertiti says she lives on a farm, so nature is her thing. Girl Scout, camping, yep. It's serene and it's peaceful. And y'all, to be woken up in the morning by the sunlight, at six something in the morning, just because the sun is bright outside and the birds are chirping and doing their thing and you hear the flow of the river. And so I came out of the yard, I would get out of the yard in the morning and I would just go stand on the back porch and just watch the water flow. And I realized, I was like, y'all know what? Nature just knows what to do. See, it's really interesting how nature communes, right? And how all of the things need each other. And they don't have to talk about it. They don't have to think about it. They just do. The water just flows. And the birds just fly. And the trees just stand still. And the bugs just move around and they groove around. And the fish just swim. The air just blows. Like everything in nature just knows what to do. And we talk about the butterflies a lot, y'all, but I don't think we realize regularly that we are nature too. Who's ever stopped to consider themselves a part of nature? Or do you think that nature is something that you go into? Talk back to me, because y'all know I'm used to standing in front of a classroom, so it's a little bit different, but it's okay. Nature is that thing that just knows what to do. And so I was telling my daddy, because he was out there with us, what I was going to be talking about tonight. I was like, you know, daddy, I'm going to be talking about nature because nature just knows what to do. He said, you know what? You write about it because the river and the water, the water flows. But which direction does it flow? What path does it take? And I knew the answer because I've heard that question a million times. The water flows in the path of least resistance. The water flows in the path of least resistance. The water doesn't fight to get to where it's going and the birds don't fight to fly through the air. And nobody teaches a bird ever how to fly. Nobody teaches the butterfly how to fly. Nobody teaches the water how to fly. And so it made me stop and sit and think about this title that I have called professor, right? What do I do? I profess. I talk about the things that I have been deemed to be knowledgeable about, right? That's what the title means. And I think so often in looking to others to teach, we forget that the lessons lie within us. And even the lessons that are there, they don't necessarily have to be taught. But so humans were smart, right? And we have these brains that we use to help us navigate this thing called the world. But so often, instead of going with the flow of life, instead of moving in the path of least resistance, we work against ourselves because we think. If y'all know what I'm talking about. Drop me a comment or butterfly or a heart or something if you have any idea what I'm talking about. I'm talking about nature. Let's think about birds, right? Do they communicate in their own language? Sure, probably, right? But the birds are just flying along and the bird's body knows when it's time to release the egg and the egg does its thing Without anybody coming to check on it, without anybody knowing what to do, the bird just sits on top of its egg and it cooks it. Cook is probably the wrong word, but it warms it to make sure that it has everything that it needs to have the right environment to thrive, right? But nobody has to tell it. 
Nobody has to have a conversation and say, let's sit down and let's talk about how to be a good bird. Nobody has to tell the spider, hey, spider, let's talk about this thing. See, we don't, the humans don't like the bugs, okay? And the bugs fly around and there could be too many of them. So we need you to create these masterpieces called webs, right? And we need you to spin them in such a way that the silk that comes out is sticky. It's pretty. You can't even see it. It can just fly into it accidentally and get trapped. And then it's a meal for you. I want everybody to stop for a second. And regardless of what life may look like, regardless of the circumstances that you might be facing, I know there is a whole lot of uncertainty about fall semester. I saw a few people say that earlier. There's a lot of people who are uncertain about jobs. There's a lot of people who are uncertain about bills. There's a lot of people who are uncertain about a whole lot of things. But the interesting thing is when we slow down and we release the resistance to our experience, Oftentimes, life just provides the path. It provides the path. The doors open up and the way is made. Oftentimes, we are thinking too much to recognize the way when it's placed in front of us. The ways are made through phone calls and the ways are made through, you know, family members checking in. And the ways are made through mortgage payment uh the CARE Act, right? That's allowing a lot of people to get some money back and to put forbearances on bills and things that aren't going so well. I just want everybody to stop for a minute and pause and be a part of nature and recognize that somewhere within your soul, somewhere within your body, if you stop the thoughts that move and you sit in your own silence, somewhere in there, the answer will find you to whatever it is the question that you may have is to whatever the question is that you have. Because we look for the support to come in the packages that we think that they should. We look for the support to come in, I use this all the time, a little blue box with a silver ribbon and a gold bow. And it should be placed in the specific place that we're looking for the answer to lie, or else we feel like it's not there for us. And I feel like what we do, being so brilliant, being the brilliant, magical creatures that we are, we forget our innate wisdom. That's why I just wanted to take a second and remind us all because seasons change on their own, guys. And what we're experiencing right now, we're experiencing seasons. I want you guys to think about what we're in spring going into summer right now, right? So isn't it interesting how it's warm during the day and it's colder at night? Isn't it interesting how the sun rises a little bit earlier and it sets a little bit later? Why? Because the plants need a little bit more so that it can grow back all the stuff that died during winter. Think about it. Right. So we have lots of plants that released life. Released life from them during winter time. So think about all the trees that released all of the leaves and think about all the animals that naturally knew this cold ain't my thing. The bear does not have to be told to hibernate. The butterfly does not have to be told to go into a cocoon. It naturally knows what to do. I want you to stop for a minute. I want you to take inventory. If the things where you, wherever your problem lies, wherever your concern lies, wherever your issue lies. I want you to stop for a second. I want you to think about just for two seconds. I don't want you to think. I want you to feel, right? Because the knowing is in the feeling. Oftentimes we think ourselves out of what we know. So I want you to stop for a second and I just want you to feel the answer to your problem. Don't think I don't know how to do that. Because that's how we psych ourselves out. Whatever thoughts come to your brain, I want you to release them. I want you to acknowledge them. Say, hey, okay, I see you. I hear you. And then release it and let it flow. And I just want you to sit with it for a second. I was talking earlier to some people about the uncertainties in the fall, right? Specifically related to school. And work and what does it mean to not social distance anymore and what does it mean to go back into spaces and places where we exist and we coexist together okay and 
so many people were like, well, you know, I would do this and I would do that. And then I stopped for a minute and I was like, wait a minute, I'm on the phone. And this is coming to me now, honestly. I'm sitting on the phone with people who this really isn't an issue for any of us. How many people find themselves working through other people's problems? Problems that haven't even been presented to them. If you know what I'm talking about, let me know. If you know what I'm talking about, let me know. If you find yourself thinking through, if you have graduated from, from Spelman and you're trying to figure out what it would feel like to not know if you were going back on campus in the fall, let me know. Let me know. Because I guarantee you, the bird is not trying to figure out how the tree is going to grow those leaves back. I can guarantee you the fish is not trying to figure out how the eagle is soaring or what is it going to do if it starts raining. So many of us inundate ourselves with the problems of everybody else. And what I want you to recognize is that it's a really good distraction to ourselves. It's a really great distraction to listening to our inner knowing. We find other problems that actually aren't ours. I want us to all remember that we are part of nature. We are part of nature. And if anything, we are resilient. I want you guys to think about how quickly we went from living our lives, minding our business, doing whatever, to instantly the new way of life was wearing masks and gloves and staying at home the majority of the times and looking at other people who might be with a group of people and going, what are they doing? That was our normal not long ago at all. That was our normal weeks ago in the, in the big scheme of life. Weeks ago, our normal was hanging out in parties and going to the club and going to concerts. And the idea of those things make no sense whatsoever. Now, why? Because we just knew what to do. Now, I'm not saying that's comfortable. It's not necessarily comfortable to have to break out of an egg. It's not necessarily comfortable. Labor and delivery is not comfortable. But does your body just know what to do? Absolutely. Absolutely. Shawnees or Cammie, you guys were talking about your concern and that you really needed this space today. I don't know if you are appropriate, but if you are, I would like to invite you on to spend some time to talk with me. I would love to invite you to spend some time. I know we're doing things a little bit different. It's Tuesday nights. We usually do this on Monday nights. Thank you guys for shifting with me today. Let me know. You can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Either is perfectly fine. And if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, Please don't hesitate to drop them in the questions box. Please don't hesitate to type them in the chat. Please let me know. I would love to see. Okay. Hi, Malika. But I want you guys to recognize the abundance that actually exists around us. I want us to stop and I want you to recognize how beautiful the days have been. And even when it gets really, really, really hot, how the world knows how to cool itself off with the rain. And then the sun comes back out. I want you to recognize, and we're not going to be here for super long today because I know we're out of schedule, okay, or off of our schedule. But I want us all to really just stop for a second. Okay, Shani's wonderful. Go ahead. Do you know how to add yourself in or ask to be on the live? We're going to wait just a second and have her join us. There we go. So she's going to come in and she's going to join us because when we first got on this live and DJ Rico Belly was doing his thing, a couple people specifically said, I'm not having a great day. And it's specifically around uncertainty, which I think is really timely seeing as though we're talking about how all the things work themselves out, how all the things have their seasons, how all the things move and groove and flow exactly as they're supposed to. Nothing happens too early. Nothing happens too late. And if this tree spends its time being sad about the leaves that it's going to lose, inherently, naturally, every single year, 
because that's the flow that nature just takes, it would be in really bad shape. And the, the pain does not come from the experience most times. The pain comes from the resistance. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, let me know. The pain does not come in the majority from the experience. The pain comes from fighting back. The pain comes from, wait, 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 wait. You weren't supposed to do that. For whatever reason, it didn't let Sean join. So we're going to try her one more time. That's what I want us all to recognize, okay? So I was out fishing this morning because we left the campsite first thing, right? And I was telling a story about how my sister... My sister, when we were kids, I remember she got a fishing rod caught in her arm. We were in the truck. It's okay, Shawnees. Um, we can get you back in. But I remember when we were kids, um, you're going to have to click that little button that asks to go live, okay? But we were in my dad's truck, and we were probably going to the river. My dad didn't have any boys, okay? So it's just me and my sister, and so we do all of the things. We do all of the girly, girly things. We do all of the not girly things at all. And so we were going to the, we were coming, leaving the river from spending the day fishing. And my sister got um, the hook caught in her arm. She's sitting and she's minding her business and she was doing something and she kind of leaned back and the top part of the fishing hook kind of snagged her arm, right? And my dad, initially, his response was, don't move, don't move, don't move. I see you, Cammie. What if fighting back is actually just trying to keep hope? We're going to talk about that in a second. So my dad's like, stay still, stay still, stay still. Don't move, don't move. And so then she yanks her arm because it was hurting. She was like, ouch. And the minute she yanked her arm back is the minute the hook went all the way into her arm. Now, I don't know if you guys know anything about fishing hooks, but... The way they work is there's like a little point on the top, right, which is where the fish gets caught. But then it's like a little wire that kind of sticks out on the side that makes sure once something goes in, it's harder for it to come out. Now, why am I telling you guys this story? I'm telling you the story because oftentimes if we recognize what is happening and we stay still, we don't dig ourselves in deeper into the pain. Does that make sense? So Cami says, what if fighting back is actually trying to keep hope? I want to help you understand that fighting back is never keeping hope. Fighting back is attempting to find the control. Because hope lies in the space where we understand that all things are happening in the way that they are supposed to. Hi, Wilson. That's where hope lies. OK, and we confuse ourselves, we trick ourselves and we say, well, well, what if just what if I'm saying, no, 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 I believe this is going to work. We talk in my class and Cami, I think you've heard this before. I know my students have heard this. Oftentimes when we are praying for something, oftentimes when we are wishing for something, oftentimes when we are wanting for something, we are not wanting the thing that we're asking for initially. We're wanting the thing that lies under that thing and under that thing and under that thing and under that thing. So we say, you know, I really would love for Spellman to be in session in the fall where we can all come back and all of my friends can be there together. And da -da 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 -da. No, what you want is the idea of community. What you want is the idea of what it should mean to be a senior. My senior year is supposed to look like this. And so we hold on to everything that we think that means, not recognizing that maybe we're praying for something else. Maybe the prayer underneath it all is, you know what? I really want to enjoy this last phase before I go into adulthood. Well, maybe what if enjoying, enjoying that phase looks like taking some time with yourself so that you can find what happiness even means? Life actually is giving us exactly what it is that we're praying for. And I told you, oftentimes we pray for ourselves and we pray against ourselves in the same breath. And the praying against ourselves sometimes comes in the need to hold on to the control of what those things look like. So we say, man, I really want things to look like this. And so 
life tries to align itself to look like this all the time. But because we can't see it right now in this moment, because we can't see it right now in this second, we think something is wrong. Oh, I just got a beautiful visual. So I want you to think about somebody who is attempting to transition hair. I know I got some guys in here and I just want you to stick with me, okay? So if somebody has been using a relaxer or if somebody has been having natural hair, I'm sorry, has been having relaxed hair or damaged hair, heat damaged hair, you're hang we have our damage, okay? And we're saying, you know what? I just want my hair to grow long and beautiful. I just want my hair to grow long and beautiful. And so our stylist says, okay, well, let me help you grow your hair long and beautiful by cutting off all of the parts of it that's dead. And you go, no, 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 you didn't hear me. I said I wanted it long and beautiful. And so your stylist is thinking, wait, okay, to keep it long and beautiful or to get it there, the best way to do it is to remove the disease, to remove the part that is toxic, to remove the things that are weighing you down, to remove the parts of you that are stopping you from getting everything that you're wanting. And even if you start to grow the things that you want, you can't even see it. You can't see it because there's so much damage there that we're trying to grow health. But you're looking at it in relation to damage. And so we think that we're not doing well. We think because we have this much new growth, we have this much space that's actually really healthy and everything we are wanting it to become. And we have this much space from here to here that's damaged and toxic and negative and nasty. We try to hold on to it because together we think that it looks like something. Together we think that, oh, that's the length that we want. No, 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 no. Your hair grows faster when you remove the dead ends, when you remove the dead weight, the stuff that's making you pretend and making you believe that the things that are there are actually will be healthy for you. Because at the end of the day, what? Life just knows what to do. Nature just knows what to do. It just knows what to do. But what we do because we can think things through and because so often we are afraid of the idea of loss that we never even focus on the spaces of gain. We are afraid of the fact that, wait, if I cut this hair off that's really damaged and fried from whatever, be it color or um, a relaxer or heat damage or whatever. And your stylist is like, I am really sitting here trying to help you out. I am really trying to give you and give you a jump start to get you everything that you need. And you keep saying, no, let me hang on to dead weight. No, no, no. And that can be dead weight in the form of friends. That can be dead weight in the frame, in the, in the sense of dysfunctional beliefs and ideas and thoughts and feelings and relationships and forms of interaction with people. I want you guys to think about that thing that you're actually praying for, the thing that you're actually wanting for. And if you don't call it prayer, that ain't none of my business. Call it whatever you want to, wishing for, thinking for, hoping for, all of those things. Whatever that is. Recognize that maybe a way is being made so that you can see the abundance that has always lied there. But see, the tree does not cry about the leaves that are falling because hope, this is what, so Cammie's question was, and I want to go back and I want to find it. Give me one second. She said, what if fight back, fighting back is actually just trying to keep hope? I want you to see that in the same idea of a tree who was trying to hold on to dead leaves, leaves that have turned 50 different colors, leaves that have no life, leaves that are brittle. And if the wind blows, it's going to take it with it. So we're talking about thoughts that are unhealthy, that if the wind blows, it's going to knock you over. Friends that are unhealthy, that if the wind blows, they would not stand up for you. It, whatever those things are, life is trying to take it where it belongs. And you're saying, no, 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 no. Hope looks like knowing that spring is going to come. And after all the dead things leave, all the new things will grow again. And that's exciting. That's what hope looks like. That's what hope looks like. How can we assure that we are flowing versus resisting things that we are praying for in life? We all know what resistance feels like. 
resistance feels like this knot that's right here in your chest and it kind of goes, ooh, like I wish I could explain it differently, right? Hmm. I can I can do this different. Let's think about rather than thinking about resistance, let's think about allowance and allowing. So resistance looks like wanting something to be different than it is. I used to work in the prisons and I was a substance abuse counselor back a time ago. OK, and anybody who's familiar with the substance abuse, um, AA, NA, all of the A's programs know that the serenity prayer is a major um, tenant, basically. OK, so I worked in a space where we said the serenity prayer every morning every night because they had AA meetings every morning and every night, AA and a meetings. And the serenity prayer goes a little bit something like this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. That's flow. Accept the things that I cannot change. Change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. I'm going to run it back. The serenity prayer goes, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Now, we used to say it a specific way, okay, because we needed to reinforce what that really meant. So this is how we would say it. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. Others. Period. The courage to change the things that I can. Me. And the wisdom to know the difference. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, let me know. Welcome, 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 beautiful people. I'm going to say it again. This serenity prayer. This will be my last time and I'm going to talk about it. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change others. The courage to change the things that I can. Me. And the wisdom to know the difference. So remember before I was telling you how many people are upset about something that's actually happening in their life versus upset about something that's actually just going to affect somebody else. Okay? Because we get it twisted. We wish that everybody around us would be something different. We wish that everybody around us would do something different. We wish that everybody around us would move and groove and make my life different than it is, not recognizing that we are always in control of the way that we are receiving. We are always in control of our response. We are always in control of the way that we navigate. And that is what flow does. Water does not come in and say, hey, mountain, why are you in the way? It finds every little hole. It finds every little crevice because the water is going to keep flowing and getting to where it needs to. That's acceptance. Acceptance versus the control. Okay. I want, if you hear anything tonight, the 20 people who are here with me tonight, we usually have a lot more, but it's Tuesday, so we good. Regardless, if you are here, it's because this message is for you. What about empathy? How does this apply? I'm going to tell you how it applies. It applies because it is not compassionate to impede on somebody else's journey. This is how empathy applies. It is not compassionate to impede on somebody else's journey. See, because we are not willing to face our own journey, because we're not willing to be a part of our own process, because we're not willing to show up for ourselves and grow to be the best versions of ourselves, we expect everybody else to move in a way that's comfortable for us. And that's not compassionate. It's not compassionate because we're all in the spaces where we are supposed to be to learn the lessons that we are supposed to learn. So here we come saying, well, listen, I don't like the way my lessons are feeling right now. I don't like the way life is showing up for me right now. I don't like the way the seasons are moving for me right now. I don't like that the leaves are falling off and not growing for me right now. I don't like that. So seasons, you need to stop changing. So months, you need to stop changing. The months are not in their business. The seasons are not in their business. Everything else is mind, well, should be minding their business. But because we have this beautiful capacity to think, because we have this beautiful capacity to process, oftentimes we get in our way. And we get in our way 
right before we get close to what it is that we were wanting anyway. So I told you guys this weekend, my family was camping and we went on this hike, this really long hike to um, this beautiful, well, we were trying to go to a waterfall. Okay. And so the path at first was really enjoyable and it was great. And we would stop every now and again. And my sister's dogs were with us. Um, and so everybody is just having a good time. We're walking along Sweetwater Creek. So the water's over to the left and it's beautiful trees and nature. And it's the whole family and the whole crew, right? And so we're walking and we get to this sign, maybe about 45 or so minutes into this hike, where it says, it didn't, it didn't say the journey, but something loosely, the journey from here is moderately difficult. So it's like, uh oh, okay. Mind you, we have German Shepherd, a Schnauzer, and a Shih Tzu. Okay. And then it's what, seven people. And here we are going down all these steps, and we're like, okay, okay, the steps, that wasn't so bad. And so we walk along a little ways, and it's like, Oh, so we're just supposed to navigate through all these trees and these branches and some of them going down and some of them are going up. And it feels like we're up against the side of like this mount. Well, I don't know what it was, but it was a whole lot of difficult. And every step of the way, huh, I had to watch my footing. I had to be very mindful of the placement of my footing. The beautiful thing, when you are actually navigating a difficult obstacle, if you don't watch every step that you make, you can't focus on nobody else's step because then y'all all going to go fall in together. So I'm having to watch every single step that I take to make sure that I'm putting my feet on firm ground. And everybody else is having to watch every step that they take. And every few steps ago, we would stop and be like, okay, you guys okay? Y'all okay? Okay, I'm okay. You can watch out and you can check for people. But the only way that I was going to get across was if I took the steps. My sister couldn't do it for me. My dad couldn't do it for me. My niece couldn't do it for me. My brother couldn't do it for me. Nobody could do it for me. Nobody could do it for me. And the landscape is not going to change. I hope this is making sense. Because if you can think of it from the standpoint of a physical obstacle course, knowing that once you get to the other side, you'll be able to see the cascading water over the rocks in the waterfall that made the journey worthwhile. You just keep taking those steps. And there were a few times, I'm not even going to lie, where we stopped and we were like, do we want to keep going further? And it would be a few people that were like, yeah, let's keep going. It's fun. Some people would be like, I don't, I don't know about this. And then we realized <laughs> we were trying to get to a waterfall. Now, mind you, none of us had been to say a waterfall before. Um, and so we're walking and we're taking these steps and it is getting increasingly difficult. And every step along the way, we're like, oh, my God, if we're taking this step forward, we're going to have to turn around to get back. I hope you're picking up what I'm saying. And so we're thinking that we're trying to go find this waterfall. And somewhere along the journey, we're like, wait, y'all look, the water is falling over the rocks. Is Maybe this has been a waterfall the whole time. We think that we're going to find this destination and we think that we're taking each step because at the end of each difficult step we take, there's going to be this really big magical prize that's there for us, not recognizing that each step that we take, the prize has been there with us all along. Each step that we've been taking, the thing that we've been trying to see and trying to get to and trying to find, it's been right there next to us on the journey the whole time. Our vision didn't allow us to see it because we got so caught up and so back, we are back, we are back. I'm going to wait till we all get here. And while we're doing this, I just want to thank everybody who joined me in Masterclass. Oh my gosh. We had an amazing time on Saturday. Thank you, Chef Lise. We had an amazing time on Saturday. If you were in there, let the people know real quick how you felt about Masterclass on Saturday. We had a great time. All right. 
So we were just talking about the waterfalls, okay? And so here we are hiking along this journey, right? Seven people, three dogs, hiking in the middle of the woods at Sweetwater Creek on the day that it was supposed to rain. And when you think about going out on a day where you think it's supposed to rain, you can convince yourself that the rain is going to be a bad thing, right? So you call yourself preparing for all of the elements that you think you were going to find on your journey, right? So we looked at the weather report today. It said it might rain. Let's make sure we have an umbrella. We got some ponchos. We're going to go out and we're going to hike this journey. We're going to go see this waterfall. And so here we are navigating down or navigating across down these bridges and down these stairs that were unnaturally far apart. Okay, y'all, I'm 411. Okay. And I just believe in my heart of hearts that stairs should generally be a normal space apart. These were not. Okay. Um, and so here I am with 30 something year old knees. One of them didn't really like me because of the rain. And we find all the things where the pain lies. But when you're in the middle of the obstacle, the only way to actually make it through is to keep putting one step in front of the other. And if you need support, finding the places, wait a minute. OK, there's a railing right here. Let me hold on to the railing. OK, I'm going up a little bit. There's a tree right here. Okay, let me make sure I'm stepping in the middle of these branches, because if not, I'm going to go cascading down the side of this thing, and it's not going to be pretty. And I don't know who's going to come find me, because the water is moving. So how many people have felt like the conditions were not what they were supposed to be because you were looking for your destination? You were looking for it to look like senior year at Spelman College. You were looking for it to look like your dream job. You were looking for it to be this specific set of circumstances. And then what it's not, you say life has failed you. We say, well, this isn't how it's supposed to be. And we fight against the current rather than going with the flow. Because once you go with the flow, you might realize you enjoy it a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Because the waterfall that we thought we were trying to get to was always there. It was always there. We're trying to go see water while we're walking next to a creek. And we're so excited to see water, not stopping to recognize that we've been with it the whole time. I ain't yelling at nobody. Listen, I'm not trying to yell. I'm just letting y'all know what nature told me when I was outside minding my business. Think about it. Think about all of the things. Okay. So this is what this is what this is all about, Stephanie. So it's the thoughts of self-doubt, right? I started this talking about what it means to be a professor. Okay. What it means to be a professor is to profess, to profess something that you should be an expert in in some way, in one way or another, right? And while I really love this job, while I really like more than anything, love this space that we have created right here, and it's a space that I'm working to be able to create in many different ways um, in the coming time, whatever that time looks like, because nature knows what to do, okay? Um, it's recognizing how life is working for us. And it's recognizing that part of the issue that we have as humans is because we've been taught things that go against our nature. Hmm, that's why I was getting through this whole time. We have been taught things that go against our nature. I told, uh, what was that? No, I did it. I didn't do this on, on my live. So I write, guys. I really um, in, enjoy writing what some might call poems, some might call short stories. I don't really care about labels. Um, but we talk in my class about the idea of coats, okay? And how we wear these coats in life. And what I would really like to do, if it's okay, is read a piece that I wrote. Hmm. It's actually on my computer. I don't even have to. Go and find my original notebook. Hey, Ja'Cory. Okay, look at that. And it was all, already up. So are y'all okay with me reading a piece that I wrote? I think I only did it for another speaking engagement I had, but I have not done this on a live yet. Um, hey, Zaire. 
So it's called coats. Okay. And you'll understand where I'm going and what nature, I'll, I'll link it back to nature in a minute. Okay. So it's called coats. Okay. Like a coat you wear. I went outside this afternoon and I realized that I should have taken a coat. It was cold out there for my short sleeved shirt. But me and Coates have this love hate relationship. And sometimes I feel like a real grown up when I choose not to wear one. Because the little girl me didn't have that option. My mother was a strict woman, and the word no just wasn't in the child's vocabulary in response to an adult. So that one Easter Sunday, when I got my brand new coat to match my brand new dress, I couldn't say no then either. That coat was the worst. The lining on the inside itched to high heaven, and I am certain that I look crazy with my arms stretched straight out, stiff as a board to prevent the fabric from touching me as much as possible. But it was my coat, and I didn't have a choice but to wear it. So I did, but it was uncomfortable. Then my aunt sent me a coat. I didn't like that one either. There was a matching one for my sister, and it was colorful, and it was loud, and the people who really know me would know who really knew me would know that I would never like it. And I especially didn't like to match. But auntie got it for you, my dad said. Yep, I didn't have a choice with that one either because it was meant to be a gift. And good girls accept gifts graciously. My favorite coat was from my godmother because she took me to the store and asked me which one I liked best. I wore it and wore it until I got, outgrew it, but I still wanted it to be mine. My parents had to trick me to get rid of it. See, life gives us coats, too. We wear some because we're told we have to, and we wear some because we receive them as gifts. We wear some that we outgrow and we try to hold on to far past their expiration dates. We wear some that fit beautifully and we hate the fabric of others, regardless of how nice it looks. People will work the hardest to convince you that you should keep it and love it, regardless of how much you hate it. And they'll say things like, oh, it's not so bad, or pain is beauty and beauty is pain, like they're the ones that have to wear it. I spent so much time putting on all these coats. The coats that everyone else wanted me to wear so that I could reflect the version of me that they wanted to see. No matter how uncomfortable, no matter how ugly I thought it was, no matter how much it just didn't fit. But when I went home the day that somebody gave me the worst coat of all, when I was all by myself and no one was there to make fun or convince me, even ask a question, I took all of them off, layer by layer, one at a time. And I felt like it took forever. But on that day, on that day, I decided that I'm the only person that gets to tell me what to wear. I'll walk right into the store. I'll try some on. I love others. I'm sorry, I'll love some. I'll like others. And I'll probably hate a few too. I'll take the one that I love all the way home and I'll wear it whenever I please. I'll even have the right to change my mind. I can leave it in the closet or I can take it right back to the store where I got it. I can return it with a thank you and a smile. But today I didn't want a coat. Today I didn't need protection. I wanted to be vulnerable to the cold. And let me tell you, the breeze feels amazing. So amazing that I might not even wear a shirt the next time. But if I do choose to wear a coat, damn it, it'll be because I choose it. It'll be because I want to. It'll be because I love how it fits. This is what it's about. Hi, Jatoya. This is what it's about. It's about recognizing that because we are such brilliant creatures called humans that we walk through life and we pick up coats and we pick up ideas and we pick up thought patterns and we pick up I, you know, ways of functioning, dysfunctional beliefs that go against our inherent nature. So we spend so much time fighting against everything that our nature just already knew that at some point along the line, we get tired. At some point along the line, they don't fit, but we have been taught I will. I'll put them on YouTube. But we have been taught that it's the right thing to do, right? If somebody gives you a gift, what do you do? You take it and you say thank you, regardless of if you hate it, regardless if they really, if they really were your family, they really were watching, they would know that this is something that you would never, ever, ever, ever like. But we take it and we say thank you and we begin to convince ourselves that we like it. We convince ourselves that 
we can talk to ourselves negatively and that we can think in horrible ways and that we can speak to us ourselves in ways that we would never talk to anybody else because we receive it so frequently from people that it, we begin to think that the coat fits. We begin to think that they belong to us. We begin to think that it is our nature not recognizing that the reason we feel like we're in constant turmoil is because our nature would just know what to do. And our nature doesn't hold on to things that are unhealthy. It is not in our nature to hold on to something that will kill us. It goes against the entire idea of life, people. That's what this is about. Recognizing that there's abundance around us and we are willing to shift the perspective into recognizing that regardless of what it looks like and feels like, sometimes it's painful because we had to walk all the way down that journey that never fit all the way down this journey, looking for water that was flowing right next to us the whole time. But the way back is faster when you realize that you were overlooking the beauty that you thought looked a certain way, that you thought would feel a certain way, that you were so convinced because you saw it in a picture somewhere, specifically maybe on somebody's Instagram or social media or whatever, because their version of love and their version of wonderful and their version of flavor and their version of experience and even the lessons that they learned that probably maybe would have been easy for you, you feel. Had they gone through your life, they wouldn't have never, you know, they wouldn't get it. They wouldn't have been able to make it. But what if we are all just being uniquely prepared for the journeys that we have ahead of us so that we can do the things that we are meant to do? If the bird gets upset that it's living in a nest, why can't I live in a house like the people? I gotta be out here in the nest. Well, the nest is what you need so that when the time comes for you to fall out of it to learn how to fly, you'll already be so high up that you have a good chance of soaring before you fall. What if our circumstances are being primed perfectly for whatever it is that we have to do, but we've convinced ourselves that the classes of 1988 through 2019 didn't have to do that. Why can't we just come to school? Why does it have to look like this for us? Well, maybe, just maybe, you are being uniquely prepared because you have already been specifically designed to do that thing that's just for you. Maybe the class of 2020 is put here to do something totally different that the classes that have come before could never, ever, 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 ever think about. Just maybe. But if we are focused on the journeys of somebody else, if the bird is focused on the spider and how it's concocting this whole web, it will never learn to fly and do the thing that it's meant to do. Because the truth of the matter is the nature that is within us, it knows perfectly what to do. It knows. Does anybody want to join me? I know earlier um, Shanice was trying to join me, but does anybody want to join me and ask any question? Who has a pressing question about nature or just wants to spend a little bit of time in some one-on-one -on -one conversation. Anybody? We got a few more minutes tonight. If you're enjoying this, let me know. If this is timely for you, let thank you. I was just saying, if this is timely for you, let me know. And I see Stephanie's um, comment. Because I know it's difficult to see life happening in a way that we've never ever, ever, ever expected to? How do we channel the inner voice? Mm, sometimes it's far more important to learn to quiet the outer one. Because oftentimes, oh, I have a whole nother thing about the kid in the back of the classroom. That's a whole nother piece that I'll bring out that's specifically about that. Oftentimes, it's far more important to quiet the outer voice. That's what the coats are. The cults are things that we've picked up along our journey. The cults are the things that, you know, we thought belonged to us or it was the cool trend. Or if you were somebody like me who was really upset that all of your friends got to get braces and you didn't. And it was really cool to have whatever color teeth you wanted. And they were like, do you not understand you don't have to go through this pain and you don't need braces? But I really wanted them because everybody else did. 
we have to be mindful to allow our journeys to prepare us. How do you break out of conditioned behavior? Okay, so we talk about this. I had a triple A approach, right? This isn't the first time that most of you have heard this. This is the way you do anything. First, you got to acknowledge it. Y'all know AAA. AAA, like the trucks that come when you're like stranded on the side of the road and, you know, you need gas or you got a flat tire or whatever. AAA, you have to acknowledge the situation. First, you have to recognize that something is not right. You just, you don't even have to know what about it is not right. You just have to recognize something does not feel right. If you made it to me, to this live tonight, I believe that the only people who ever make it to this space are the people that the message is meant for. So if this is for you and you're here, then you came because there was an assessment of some sort that nature stood out to you. You just wanted to know what I was talking about. Okay. And then once you're here, you get to assess your situation. Like, hold on, wait a minute. Okay. Now that I'm being presented new information let me see how this fits is this a coat that i would like to wear is this a coat that i've been wearing this whole time and that i would like to release how does this fit let me assess the fact and figure out what is not right here okay it's like your check engine light has come on that is not really helpful if you don't do the full diagnostic and figure out what in the car is broken all the check engine light does is says something is not right then the mechanic has to go in and assess what about the situation is not right. And then once we list out, they'll give you a long, um, however, 120 point check, right? At the dealership or online, um, at the dealership or the mechanic, right? And they'll tell you, well, we checked all of these systems and 110 things were right, but these 10 right here, we gotta come, we gotta do something about them in order for you to be functioning at your prime. In order for you to be functioning at 100%, these things need to be addressed. And that's what we do. We address them. So acknowledge, then we assess, and then we address. That's how you break out of conditioned behavior. And you have to be gentle with the process, right? So again, God, the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity. Grant me the peace. Grant me the stillness. Tell my butt to go sit down somewhere. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change. Because here I am, God, out here, or God or spirit, source, whatever you refer to, whatever your divine being is that feels good and comfortable. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. I'm in everybody else's business. I'm out here trying to figure out and find the things that I can change or I'm just really upset and stuck in the mud about the thing. Why won't this tire move? I don't understand. Well, you can sit here and look at it and recognize that you're stuck in the mud and be really upset that you're stuck in the mud or you can do something about it, right? Because the tire is not going to move on its own. God, grant me the peace. Tell me to calm down so that I can figure out what is going on. And then it says, grant me the courage, grant me the bravery, find some gumption in my spirit. I need you to dig down up in there and make me okay with needing to do something about the things that I can change. And nine times out of 10, that's me because the tire is not gonna move if I don't recognize that I'm the one that needs to move it. The tire is not going anywhere, it's stuck in the mud. I can look at it and be mad at it all day long, but the only way that it is going to move is if I move. And sometimes it's going to ask somebody for help, looking for support, that's fine. My prayer is that this is a space of support. Right? Grant me the courage to accept, I'm sorry. Grant me the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Help me quiet my mind enough so that I can calm down and recognize the things that belong to me, the things that don't. Help me figure that out. All right, we got a request to be in my video with me. Let's see. So we're going to let Coach come in. He must have a question. I want to talk for a second. I promise I'm not going to hold you guys too much longer today. But the serenity prayer, I promise you. I encourage you to think about it that way, right? The things that you can do something about is you. That's it. That's the only thing you can do anything about. And if you can't change something physically, then you can ch change your mindset around it. Okay? And then 
recognize the things that you cannot do anything about. Coronavirus is here, period. Now, there are people who have been gifted, who have been blessed with the insight and the scientific ability and um, medical ability to do something about it. And we let them do it because if not, we're going to accidentally kill somebody pretending that we're a doctor. That's not your job. Don't tell anybody what to do. Take them to the person who can. And mind your business. We had a whole nother situation. I mean, I'm sorry, a whole nother week about that. I don't know why it's not letting him in. I'm so happy you tapped in today too, Cammie. I know there are a lot of things out here that don't feel comfortable right now. There are a lot of things that have shifted and moved and changed and they do not feel good. But what are the things in here that you can do? Because sometimes it's just a recognition. Like last semester, I was so upset. I was so busy. I was so mad that... I could never sit down. I could never just have a moment. I could never just be with and for myself. And so life said, wait, you really want a break? Okay, boom, here you go. And it's like, who told you to give me a break? Oh my God, I can't do anything. Oh my God, I have this and that to do. Take a deep breath and truly assess. Assess from an honest space, not just the things that are bad, but where do the blessings lie in this mess? There are blessings in the messings, okay? Where is your blessing in the mess? It looks like it's not letting anybody join me today. I don't know what this is about, but next week, I promise. Are there times where we are, let me wait for the rest of this question. Spend a lot of time in nature. Are there times where, I'm waiting for the rest of that question. I want you to stop and I want you to find the blessings. Where are your prayers being answered right now? Where are your wishes and dreams and your hopes being fulfilled right now? It's a lot of you who literally have been in class or in school of some sort for a really long time. And you probably thought, man, if I could just have a little break. There we go. Hey, Coach, how are you? How are you? Doing, doing good. Doing? What's going on? Nothing. Uh, well, I was sitting on a river until these Louisiana mosquitoes got to me. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but no, um, you know, as you know, I spent a lot of time on the water and the river and mm -hmm. whatever. Are there times where we're listening to nature, but or, or we feel as though we're listening to nature, but mm -hmm. we're not? Meaning, like we think that this is we're 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 flowing with the water, and we think that but we're actually creating the water to mm -hmm. trying to create the water to go elsewhere. Hmm. I think that's only something that we can know, depending on the situation. If if in any okay, so using the example of water, right? Yeah. If we are water and we are flowing in water. The water just naturally moves. If it comes up against against resistance of some sort, say it's a dam, right? I'm thinking I'm thinking of the Chattahoochee River, which has dams along, along the way, right? So if the water comes up against the dam, a couple of things will happen, right? Sometimes it'll just sit there. Sometimes it'll trickle through, right? It'll find any water will flow. It'll find any little hole that it can find to go. If the water builds up to a certain extent, I don't care about this dam. It will go over it. The thing is, the water just flows to wherever it is supposed to go. The water is not trying to direct itself. The water is just trying to stay in flow. So these, these obstacles or situations can us from... I think if your obstacle is you, then yes, if your obstacle is somebody else, if your obstacle is another situation, here's the thing, okay. Water, I think, I'm just gonna go to serenity prayer because it's not even about what I think. Grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. If there's nothing that you can change about it, what can you change in yourself? That's what it is. So if the water says, I keep coming up against this dam, the dam isn't going anywhere. Well, let me just trickle through. I'm going to find somewhere that I need to go. Right? And it might not be to the destination that I thought. Maybe the water will shift its tide because the, move, mm, the moon moves water. 
sometimes the moon will shift the tide. Sometimes the tide is coming in. And if it's not supposed to come in anymore, the tide just turns around and moves another direction. And that's okay. I think it's okay. I think somewhere deep in, the, in, in our souls, we know when we are trying to control the flow of water or move with it. Yeah. You know? Does that make sense? Yeah. A lot of sense. A lot of yeah. sense. Just allow yourself to flow and to get wherever the water is trying to take you. Wherever it's gotcha. trying to go. Allow it to take you. And if you don't like it there, hop back in the water and keep on going. It's going to get me where I need to go. It's going to get you where you need to go when we get out of our way. When we so get no. out of our way. Because our way is up here. We think and we think and we think and we think and we contrive and we move and we sort. Flow. Thank you, Leah. Flow. We flow. Spot on. Spot we flow. On. Thank you for joining me. No doubt. I no appreciate, doubt. appreciate it. All right. I'm going to drop you back out, okay? Out of here some kind of way. So I think a lot of it, and what we were just talking about with Coach, is recognizing. That's the, so acknowledging is first. But then it's the assessment. Are we really flowing? Are we trying to control the flow of the water? Are we moving with the water? Are we moving against the water? Are we trying to be a salmon? Are we trying to flow upstream? The beautiful thing is, you'll know because you'll start to get tired. Oh, okay. That's the answer, Coach. You'll start to get tired when you're going against the flow. If you swim in here and you're swimming against the water, you get tired because you're literally fighting nature. Literally. Fighting nature. And if you just turn around sometimes and you swim with it, it gets easy. It's enjoyable. It might feel like fun. It might feel like vacation. But we are the only ones, each individual person, we are the only ones who can truly assess our situation. Well, you know what to do, Ju. You got to quiet the outside noise so that you can hear the inside. There's noise that's happening all along, all, all around us all the time. We're in the car. I know I turn my music sky high. I really like music, hence the soul sessions and life lessons. I enjoy it very much, okay? So I crank my music up and I'm having a good time, but guess what? Sometimes maybe if there's an ambulance, it takes me seeing it before I hear it. This is just my truth. I'm not saying to be like me. I'm just saying that this is what it is. But the fact that all that I can hear in my car is my music, does not mean that the birds aren't still out there chirping and that there aren't other cars and that there aren't other noises and that are that there aren't other sounds that aren't begging to be heard if I turn down the external noise just a little bit. So when we're not sure, mm -hmm, think about it. I know I'm not the only one who does this, but sometimes depending on how tight the parking space is, I really like, remember, you know, I like to listen to my music loud. Sometimes, depending on how tight the parking space is, oftentimes if it's a parallel park, right? I got to turn my music down so that I can feel my way into this space. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down. So music oftentimes that I'm listening to is not Patrice singing. It's the music that's from somebody else that's either on my phone or on the radio. I really don't listen to the radio, but whatever, right? But I got to turn the music down. I got to turn all the outside noise in because I can't hear the way that I know how to get into this car space. Exactly, Kings of Comedy. Because I naturally know what to do. I know that I need to pull up a little bit. I need to get a little bit past it. And then right when I can see, I need to start cutting all the way in. I need to take it tight all the way till I get my back tire close. And then I need to whip it back. I know what to do. I naturally know what to do. But sometimes it is just too loud for me to think my way through it. Sometimes it is just too loud for me to feel my car. I know how big my car is. I know how big this space is. I know how to get in here. I, ain't, I don't have any problem doing this the minute I quiet the noise so I can hear all that naturally lies within. So I can hear what exists outside of everybody else. Exactly. You got to find your focus. It is the same thing. 
We inundate ourselves with everybody else's noise so that we don't have to hear. But what we are stealing from ourselves is the opportunity to find our space. Boom. I think that should be the end of the live. Let me know if you just picked up what I put down. I know it's a delay and this, you know, the gratification is just not there. <laughs> when it takes you guys another 30 seconds to hear what I just said. But we have to turn down the noise from everybody else and everything else and all the people and the music and everybody else's business and all of the things we have to be able to turn it down so that we can get in our space, the space that's just for us. That's Because oftentimes the space that you're trying to park in is super tight and it will just barely fit your car. I mean, like, mm. like if you cut it too hard, you might clip something. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Don't worry, Candy, because it's on YouTube, too. And the minute this all finishes, it's going to automatically up to upload. Hey, YouTube. Be willing to recognize that if you are not listening to what it is that you just naturally know how to do, you ain't never going to get in your space. And you want to know what's crazy is that oftentimes in doing that part, you might have your music up and you'll pull back, pull up. Pull back, pull. You will play footsie and hopscotch and jump rope with the spot that's always been yours and never quite get in it. And then if you play around too much and don't turn it down, you're going to pull up that one time and somebody else who knew what they were doing and has been focused and has been looking for it in is going to pull right into your spot and ain't nothing you can do about it. Don't miss your spot. See, here's the thing, though, Leah, the space is only for you. But if you don't want it, somebody else will. You are not the only person that, can, that is training for a position that looks like yours. You are not the only person that is training for a position that looks like yours. But here's a beautiful thing. Even though it was the perfect fit for your car, it'll fit this, one, this other one nice, too. And the crazy thing about it is it was your space. And this other one is going to pull into your space, have fun in your space, and then pull on out because they recognize it was never the end point on their journey. Yes, you are the only one who can do it like you can, but you are not the only one who has to do it. You are not. Trust and believe. If I didn't show up on live on Tuesday night tonight, Somebody, you were going to have something else to do. There will be something else filling this space for you, filling this spot for you if I didn't show up. If you didn't show up here and you decided to do something else somewhere else, that's fine. That's your business. It's not mine. But the piece that you might have needed to receive or the message that maybe I thought was for the 25 people that were on the live with me right now, but it was really just for you. Don't worry, because as who said it? I want to say Grayson said she picked it up and put it in her purse, which means it's not going to come back out and you're not going to find it. Because sometimes people find that thing that was yours and they hold on to it because it was better than what was theirs. And so they ain't never going to let that thing go. They ain't going to let it go. I'm going to take this one last question and we're going to be done for the night. If you miss your spot, will you find your spot again in another journey since that spot is meant for you? So here's the thing. I believe that everything, divine timing, right? I believe in the purposeful positioning, okay? But here's the thing. It might find you and it might look totally different because the experiences that you find later and the experiences that life teaches you in the place where you've missed it right here, it doesn't mean you won't find it again. It just means that maybe you would have had it earlier. Maybe it wouldn't have taken you the next five years to get that thing or the feeling that was similar to this position that was already here. And you might have been five years past that point. I don't feel like you can ever miss your space. I feel like you can delay your journey to getting there. That's just me. I'm not putting that belief on nobody. I'm just saying. 
You can delay your space. You can delay getting there if you choose to. But sometimes what it requires is us turning down everybody else's noise. And I, like I said before, I believe that whoever makes it on live and whoever makes it to YouTube and whoever makes it to watch this is because it was meant for them. I actually had this happen. I have a client who didn't become my client until more recently. And this particular client I told to go and watch a previous live. This is real life. So maybe became my client in the past two-ish weeks, two, three weeks, something like that. And I told the conversation that we were having, I was like, you know what? I need you to go watch this live from five weeks ago. From five weeks ago. Now, if five weeks ago they had watched that live or been there, it wouldn't have hit because the experience that they were having in life wouldn't have aligned. It wouldn't have mattered. It would have been like, oh, wow, that's really deep. But it wouldn't have hit the same way. It wouldn't have cut the same way because the specific timing was necessary to pick up the messages, right? The goal is the way that we actually get to happiness is to also embrace the healing, is to also embrace the difficult parts. So remember I told you guys earlier um, my family, we were out hiking this weekend and we are hiking and we're going down this as they said, moderately difficult, but I think it was extremely difficult once we got to certain parts of this path that we were in nature hiking on because we were going to see the waterfall and we were so insistent on going to see this waterfall that it took about 30-ish minutes to recognize we've been walking next to falling water. It's cascading over rocks. It's like, whoosh. And we were like, wait a minute, has this been the waterfall the whole time? Sometimes you can be moving adjacent to your parking spot or to your spaces and it's always been there and you're not pulling in. And so other people are just taking turns. Other people are stopping and admiring the thing that was supposed to be for you to stop and admire. But sometimes if you go too far on the journey, that doesn't mean you might not find another body of water to swim in. You might not find another body of water to enjoy that also has a waterfall that is brilliantly beautiful. But life is a lot more interesting. Life is a lot happier, a lot more joyful when you can heal and be happy simultaneous, simultaneously. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Hi, everybody. You guys are coming in at the end. We are just wrapping up. But in a nutshell, really briefly, I'm going to break it down. We got, I'm going to say three points. Nature just knows what to do. Nobody has to teach a bird to fly. Nobody has to teach the caterpillar how to go into the cocoon and then how to come out and then how to fly. Nobody has to do that. There is no set of instructions that somebody gets. The interesting thing is, as humans, we get all of these instruction books. We get all of these people who give us lessons on lessons on lessons. I'm one of them. I'm hoping that I'm helping you take the lessons off. That's my goal. Okay. I'm trying to be on the way back to where you started, which is nature, just knowing what to do, okay? So the point in this is there is somewhere in you that you know how to behave, you know how to flow, you know how to move and groove and be happy, but we've been taught these things and we've adapted them as their, as our own. And it's just so important to be able to release the things that don't fit and be okay with the grief that might come. Be okay with the fact that it might feel like loss to release damaged ends. It might feel like you're losing length to release the parts of your unhealthy so that the healthy can make way and grow through. Because the seasons change on their own. All of these things do it on our own and we forget that we are also part of nature. Serenity prayer, God, spirit, divine, source, science, whatever you want to call it, whatever feels good to you, higher power, higher self. Grant me the serenity. Grant me the peace. And I'm ending on this. Grant me the peace to accept the things that I cannot change, which is other people, my surroundings, the folks out there. If they want to go out and catch the Rona, that's on them. You can stay at home and mind your business, okay? And everybody can mind their business and be on whatever road to healing and their journey that they need to be, okay? Bring me the peace. Calm me down. Make me realize, Lord, that's not my business. What is my business? And let me stay in it. Grant me the courage to find my business and stay there. 
So grant me the peace to release their business. Grant me the courage and the bravery to find mine and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. That is my prayer for you all for this week. I love you. I really do. I really do. I say that word a lot. People mean it however they mean it. I truly mean it. And if it feels a little bit uncomfortable, I'm going to be here still loving you until you love yourself enough for it to feel good. Y'all have a beautiful week. I will see you guys back on Monday and we're going to have a real good time. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Enjoy your week. You all too. Happy Tuesday and enjoy your week.